Hey guys, Ron here, and welcome back to another installment of Creating New Pokemon from Fears. In the first video, I turned my own personal phobias into Pokemon, either as a way to understand my fears by triggering those phobias, as a form of exposure therapy, or as a way to overcome my fears by turning them into lovable monsters. In the second video, I turned your fears into Pokemon, and in the third installment, I turned some general fears into Pokemon for my personal fan-made region, a Sone, a region based on the Middle East. Today, we'll continue with that concept, so make sure to click on the card on the top right corner to check out the previous videos if you haven't. Now the first fear that we're going to be tackling today is kind of a minor phobia that I have as well and it's, it's fairly common and that is submechanophobia. The fear of man-made objects that are submerged under water. <laughs> I understand the fear. It's definitely related to my megalophobia which is the fear of large objects um, but it's also attached to the more understandable thalassophobia, the fear of the ocean. God that is kind of uh, unsettling, since a lot of people get anxious um, of the sheer size of the ocean, literally the biggest thing on earth, so it makes sense to be afraid of something large and unnatural suddenly appearing underwater. So we're going to make a metal Pokemon that lives underwater. Now obviously it's going to be a Pokemon that belongs there naturally, um, and the most appropriate man-made object that belongs underwater is the submarine. So how about we make a giant armored fish that is based on the Dunkleosteus? Um, this prehistoric armored fish. Maybe it'll shoot out torpedoes, and perhaps those torpedoes are its pre-evolved forms, uh, like Dragapult do. So let's go! I'm honestly gonna start out by sketching a Dunkleosteus head, giving it armor that forms the shape of a submarine. The problem is that for three hours I ended up experimenting with the configuration of its armor. I simply didn't know what patterns and proportions it should have. Even the eyes were tricky since I knew I wanted him to have inset eyes surrounded by armor, but I didn't know what shape the eye would or should be. I made it thicker and gave it less mechanical eyes so that at least the eyes looked like they were alive. A tiny fin and a hole where it shoots its prevo from, but I thought it looked weird with one hole so I tried applying others on its face since submarines don't shoot their warheads from fins but rather the front. I abandoned that idea though and I experimented with another set of fins like the Dunkleosteus had, but abandoned that idea too. It still doesn't look like a Pokemon to me. The head also doesn't look anything like a fish anymore. I started going crazy and changed the head multiple times throughout this period. While the head's not there yet, I finally decided to put the fin closer to its face. I started applying colors even though the head isn't where it's at in the final design. This is when I started doing some changes off screen, but even as I continued recording, it was still not there, and now I was even confused about which color scheme I wanted. I ended up toning everything down and finalizing his face before moving on to its tiny pre-evolved form. I guess it really is helpful to just simplify everything when you have artist block, especially when making Pokemon. Now its pre-evolved form is basically a missile fish, just making the shape of a tiny torpedo and applying fish elements that resemble the elements its evolved form has, like circular eyes, fins, nose line, and distinct segments. It's actually very easy to make a Pokemon family if you work backwards. The Prevos always look good when they are tiny tiny, less complicated versions of their evolved form. And there you have it, the fast but frail Torpices evolves into Dunkraft at level 30. Torpices love to be launched from the holes on Dunkraft's fins. Their aerodynamic heads allow them to be launched at top speeds, but their armor isn't fully formed yet, so they usually self-destruct upon impact. The closer they are to evolution, the harder their warhead becomes. They aren't the best at changing directions while swimming. Their evolved form, Dunkraft, is one of the most resilient Pokemon in the sea. They slowly swim through deep water, not only is Dunkraft a hunting machine, but it can also outlast any sea Pokemon in battle. When it isn't housing Torpices in its fins, it lets out jets of water from its fins in order to speed up or change directions. It can penetrate the hull of a vessel without much force. In ancient times, this Pokemon reigned supreme. Not even a Sharpedo can breach its defenses. Now it has competition from the likes of Gyarados and Wishy Washy. Here are their shinies. Dunkraft has the abilities Sturdy and Sheer Force, and the hidden ability Strong Jaw. This family is related to Carvana, Dracovish, Relicanth, and even Wishy Washy, who looks like a Dunkleosteus and Submarine in its school form. This line serves as the Asone region's Gyarados or Milotic equivalent, a small fish that becomes a sea monster, this time focusing on physical defenses. I have never spent more time on any average Pokemon than I have on Dunkraft, so many minor revisions. I hope it's successful. Next I wanted to make a three-stage ghost family for the Asson region. I know I had various ghostly entities uh, from, vi from various Abrahamic religions that I wanted to use as inspirations for Pokemon in my region, like uh, demons, uh, jinns, and Shadim. But what kind of ghost works with the list of uh, fears that I have? So I had an epiphany. 
How about we make a Pokemon that is based on the fear of touch and combine it with the Dibuk, a wandering spirit in Jewish folklore that sticks onto or, or adheres to people, and then it you know, possesses them and you have to get a rabbi to exercise the spirit. So it's a ghost that sticks onto you. It'll represent the fear of touch, or halfophobia, however, however it's pronounced. Now, I like my Pokemon to be based on some kind of animal, um, so how about we base this ghost on some kind of animal that sticks onto other animals, you know, a parasite. At first I was thinking leeches, but then I thought that this, this line would end up looking too much like uh, the Tynamo line, even though those are completely different animals. Then I was thinking maybe gecko, but gecko first is not a parasite, so it's, it's not even scary at all, so I don't want to make a ghost gecko. And then I was thinking about it, ticks. I'm not going to show ticks because they, you know, they trigger some arachnophobia and people don't want to scare them too much. Uh, it'll, it'll be a joltic if I make a tick Pokemon. So how about a flea? Why not make a flea larva, you know, that looks like this, you can see through its skin, um, that floats around and sticks onto people. And you'll be able to see the blood that it has sucked. Then it'll evolve into the pupa stage, you know, like a little cocoon. And then the final evolution will be a mischievous flea ghost that, you know, hops around stealing souls. And instead of blood, you can actually see the soul through the translucent body of this flea Pokemon. This will end up representing the fear of touch and blood and make sense in the Asone region. Awesome. So I know I basically want a flea larva that is floating because it's a ghost. And it'll be white and transparent with blood inside. I originally made it way more ghostly, but this is a pre-evolved Pokemon. Let's make it uh, somewhat cute. I gave it suction cup lips, but scrapped the entire thing. Made a new version that was spikier, but I'm embarrassed by how this looks like a five-year-old drew a potato. I think this is when I started kind of getting it by basically making a worm instead of a worm. It's got a whole duosion thing going, but its real body is actually the outside part, not the inside. Instead of spikes all over, I thought some at the top and bottom were a nice balance. The other problem is that this thing looks miserable, so I made it happy. That's when I had the idea that it latches on to those it likes. I changed the proportions so it's way cuter. I made the blood inside look like a fluid and gave it segments like an insect. I colored it in so you understand the concept, but the lips are a different color in the final rendering. Say hello to Possessed. The Possessing Pest. This tiny Pokemon is very clingy. It'll latch on to those it seems fond of and slowly suck their blood. It floats around looking for life energy. It favors the blood of the most energetic of creatures. Their skin is translucent, making them disappear when empty and fully visible when full and content. I'm glad I was able to find a good balance between cute and creepy. Always remember that the red part is its insides, not its true body like a duosian. Let's make the pupa stage evolution now. So this is basically the haunter stage of the line, except it'll be fat and plump. A cocoon ready for evolution. It won't be happy though since it's kinda sleeping most of the time. As it evolves, its abdomen gets bigger. I gave it skinny dangling legs. After all, when it evolves, it'll acquire long powerful legs. It'll have a ball of blood fused with spirit energy in its gut. And I'm gonna give it segments too. Its eyes are half open, almost like it's half awake, and it has tiny floating hands little spikes on its head that become antennas, and patterns on its back and chest that'll eventually become padding when it evolves as well. Originally this guy was also supposed to have blood inside of it, but while making the evolved form I had the idea that it would be transitioning to having a soul visible through its skin, so it went from brown to purple in the final design. Here is Verment from Vermin and Dormant. The soul data of the blood it has sucked has accumulated into a ball of physical energy. In order to contain and store the energy it needs to evolve, it stays motionless and slowly floats in the air. It does not like to be bothered. They are completely full and don't need to eat until they fully evolve. I really enjoy the color of its shiny. Now I know I want the fully evolved form to have a big butt, long legs, and tiny head like a flea, but let's first build its personality. I made it mischievous. Complete Gengar vibes. Let's solidify the big abdomen and separate the segments. It'll have long legs to jump with, and at this point they also look like long haunting ghost hands. It's an illusion that makes it scarier. But here are its tiny ghost hands. They're raised up as if this Pokemon is popping out and saying boo. It has some back plates like a flea and lines to separate its head, thorax, and abdomen. But once we color it, you can finally see the soul that is inside its abdomen, making it pale blue, almost like the whiteness of a ghost, and finishing up the color scheme. And finally, the ghost flea Pokemon, Awfully. This Pokemon jumps around from host to host, collecting soul energy. It stores the accumulated soul energy in its abdomen and ejects new possessed once it's full. Awfully are very mischievous. They are able to phase through objects to get inside houses. However, they do not favor clean and sanitized locations. They can jump 50 times their size in a flash and continue floating upwards until they hit the stratosphere. In ancient times, these Pokemon were responsible for plagues, but with the advent of Pokemon training, they are able to be easily disposed of when met with the Pokemon battle. They'd rather hop away than fight. 
In battle, they project spirit energy from their behind. Here's their blood-colored shiny. They have the abilities Clear Body and Infiltrator with the hidden ability Quick Feet. I hope you enjoy the Pokemon I make that combine many different inspirations in a seamless way. This Pokemon is a Dibbuk without literally being a generic ghost. I'm also glad about how much of a personality it has. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe so I know part 5 should be made. Check the description for the music I used, t-shirts I made for you guys, and my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early. You can also get the same rewards by clicking the join button and becoming a member. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram to see the final artwork of my Pokemon, and uh, bye!